you're going to learn how to sort, compare, and see what's inside of a custom class that you built without having to do any complicated code whatsoever. Welcome to DataVids. This is a really simple and short video explaining a little bit about iCompatible and iEquatable, which are extremely powerful interfaces that are super easy to use in .NET. This video is going to be using .NET 7 console application. And what we've got so far is just a regular main method, which you know you could always change this to be a static async task main, but this is just out of the box main method. I've checked that box that said, or I've unchecked that box about the include top level methods when you create a new project. Anyways, so I've created a vehicle class, which as you can see on the right hand side, it's vehicle.cs. And what this is, is a very simple class that has ID, name, tire pressure, color, and weight. And what we're going to do is we're going to implement iEquatable of type vehicle. Now, real quickly, the difference between iEquatable and iComparable is that iEquatable, you're just going to be comparing if two instances of an object or two instances of different types of objects are equal. If you wanted to do two different types, then in here, as you can see on the screen, I would place the other class's name. If we were doing I comparable, then we don't just want to see if the two instances are equal. We also want to see how they compare in order to perform a sort, for instance. So we would want to know, does one come before or after the other? Whereas in this case, we just want to know if they're equal using iEquatable. I'm going to run through iEquatable first, then we'll do iComparable. Great. So go ahead and save your files. If you've created a class like this, if you're following along, the next thing that you would do would be control dot on this interface, and you would choose implement interface. That generated this method here. And because I said I'm comparing vehicle to vehicle, that placed vehicle in the parameter here. As you can see, it allows it to come in nullable because the other instance that we're comparing to this one might be null. And you might want to say, hey, even though it's null, they're equal. But in my case, I'm going to say if one is null and one's not null, they are not equal. So I could say if other other being the other instance is null, then I will return false. This method returns true if they're equal, false if they're not. All other cases, since there's only one other set of cases, I don't need another if or an else, I could just do a return statement, could fall into comparison of the properties. So how do you want to say your vehicles are equal? I don't know your use case. Maybe you just want to compare the ID and you don't care about their properties. In my case, I'm going to skip the ID and say if the name and tire pressure are equal, then they're the same type of vehicle. They're the same vehicle. Otherwise, and I don't care about the ID and color. Otherwise, they won't be equal. So let's do it like that. Name and tire pressure. So let's say if the other vehicle's name, other.name, is equal to name, which is the same thing as saying this dot name, and the other dot tire pressure is equal to this tire pressure, or just tire pressure, then return true. Otherwise, it will return false because I've got an and. So if either one of these conditions is false, then it is, or I'm saying both of these conditions must be true in order for it to be true. If I put an or statement here, then anything where the name matched or the tire pressure match would be true. It's not going to work that way. They both must be true in order for this to be true. Okay, simple enough. Let's go back to our program. As you could see, I've got two different are they equals. And this is just this line is just here to show you that you don't want to do it this way. You want to use that equals method that we just worked on. This one is always going to say false. You really just use this with primitive types. 
or if you want to overload that operator. We want to remove that. We're going to focus on equals. Let's go ahead and run through it. Now we said tire pressure and name, I believe. A, B, C, and 65. So these should be equal. I'm going to hover over are they equal or are really equal. It says true. Let's change this one to be 66 and run it again just to show you it should be false. And it's false. Good. I'll put it back to 65 for now. I'd like to show you one more use case of the I equatable before we go into I comparable. I won't cover all the possibilities because these are very powerful indices and they work with lots of other out of the box Microsoft tools, but we'll cover some. If you go to the I equatable documentation at Microsoft, these are the methods that sound the most interesting that can be used once you've implemented I equatable. Contains, index of, last index of, and remove. They all typically work the same way and they all require that you've implemented I equatable or that the class you're using has already implemented I equatable. So let's do one of them. Let's do contains. First thing you're going to need is a list. Bar my list. We'll make a list of vehicles. And let's add a couple of things to it. Let's add vehicle one and vehicle two to it. Now, if you'd like to see if this list contains one of these, you can do bar does contain equal to my list dot contains. And now you can put either one of these in here. Check for vehicle one and put in vehicle one. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint in the equals method. And before we run it, let's comment out or remove the equals check we did earlier. I'll just shift delete to cut the whole row. Now we'll only hit the equals method with contains and not with the code that we just removed. We know for sure we're getting in there that way. Another thing you could do is just put an extra breakpoint there. Hit F5, press F11. As you can see, we did jump into equals. Press F10. And we can see that the name is being compared. And does contain is true. On the flip side of that, why don't we make a vehicle three that's not in there and we'll see if that one does return false. So we'll do var vehicle three, new vehicle. And color equal to yellow. And let's see, tire pressure, 999. We don't have any required properties, so that's good enough. We'll compare it to vehicle three. And you saw it went through that breakpoint twice because there are two items in the list and it didn't find a match on the first item, so it kept going. If I hover over does contain, it's false as expected. What else you could do that's kind of interesting there is you could change up the type. So if I go back into vehicle, I could implement a different type there. I could do another one and you get another method and this type would be different, but we'd still be doing the same process. But the cool thing about that is it'll allow you to compare two items of different types. As you can see, this is a list operation as are these. Let's move on now to I comparable. Unfortunately, before I do that, I must cover a couple of guys. There are some scenarios where this equals method still won't be called depending on what internal comparison you're doing. And so whenever we implement I equatable, Microsoft recommends that we also go ahead and grab 
the override for the base class of object and we're going to do public override bools. I'll show you how this goes down. They do just like we did up here. I'll copy and paste that here. If the incoming object is null, we could say they're not equal. What a lot of times people do, and it may not apply, especially if we're just comparing specific parameters, but a lot of times people will say, if the types don't match, they're not equal. If you wanted to do that, you would say, you know, if this dot get type is not equal to object dot get type. Um, but, and that is from the Microsoft example, I didn't come up with that. But in this case, we're not actually wanting that. We want it to match this behavior exactly. So what we would do is do just like this. And we could do object and object. It doesn't know object.name because we have to cast it first. So maybe what we could do is uh, cast object. And I mean, there's obviously a use for code reuse here, but we call the cast object equal to vehicle object. And we can use cast object here. And again, I, I realize there is definite room for code reuse here. But most of the time you will be hitting this one anyway. If you hover over it, it will tell you any, any issues that might happen. It's a possible nullability issue. What it's actually saying is that when you override a method, it needs to be exactly the same. And so we need to add a little question mark here to allow a nullable parameter. Besides, this statement wouldn't make sense, right? Get hash code is the other one that Microsoft recommends to be overriding. We're not going to cover it in detail here, but basically this is just if you want to return an identifier, which could be used to get a unique value or a specific value out of a hash collection, or in this case, any collection of objects. We want to take a look at the Microsoft documentation on that one as we're not going to go into detail on hashes here. Let's move on to iComparable. So if you come to the top, and just add a comma and do iComparable. Once again, I compare vehicle to vehicle, although there's no reason why you can't put in something else here, a person, a tree, whatever, some other kind of class that you want to compare one of those objects to a vehicle object. The concepts are the same. You don't need an additional video to do that. Just type in your class name there and go ahead and click Implement Interface just as I'm doing here. As you can see, the public compare to with nullable vehicle showed up just like equals. And really, the only main difference that we got to do is instead of returning are the two items equal, we have to return does it come before or after? Or are they equal? Compare to, we're just going to return less than if the value we're comparing it to is less than in the concept of sorting. We're going to return zero if they are equal and we'll return one as a positive number if it's greater. So that's simple enough. I'm going to paste this in here. We have to deal with the null value. I'm saying if the null value, if, if the one we're comparing it to is null, then we'll say it, it will put it later in the list when we make the sort. That's really an easier way to think about it is where do you want it to land in the sort after the one you're comparing it to? at the same position or before. Positive number means after. Now, instead of making two statements here, one saying if other is less than, we'll return negative one, and if it's greater, we'll return one, and if they're equal, return zero, we can just call the base class for what we're comparing. It doesn't make sense to compare by color or name or even by ID if we're sorting. I think in this simple scenario, we would be sorting the items by weight, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to compare weights. In your application, you might have an enumeration of colors and say reds before green, which is before blue, etc. But we haven't built out any such logic or have any business requirements in this simple app. So I'll keep it simple. 
And what we'll do is we are going to return the base class compared to, or not base class, we'll, we'll call the compare to on the basic type, not base, not basic, but base, basic type of decimal. So we'll return weight dot compare to other dot weight. And just so you see, if you hit F12 on this compare to, it might take a minute to navigate to this definition. But this will go in, and I'm now in system.runtime, it looks like. And this is running another computation, deck calc bar deck compare. And I can't navigate into that. But if I, I if you were to go to the compared to on the int, it would have given you a nice little comment. If I did, uh, for instance, ID, I'll show you that real quick. If I did ID. Hit F12. F12 there. As you can see, zero if the values are equal, negative if it's less, positive if it's more. But we're not going to do that. We're going to return if the weights are different. And before I run the application, I want to give you the gotcha right away on this one since we kind of stalled giving you the override on the other. Microsoft recommends that you overload the comparisons. So greater than, less than, greater than, equal, etc. And here's the example here. It's actually a static method. And we're overloading those, not overwriting, as you can see. And what we could do is we could actually do the same thing that we did above here and return. Instead of the compare to, what we can do is return if the weight is greater than, since this is greater than method. So you can return if operand one dot weight is greater than operand two dot weight. Operand is just my parameters there. And as you can see, if I hover over this little error notation, it's saying if we do the greater than, we should also do the less than. So if I control dot, does not fix it for us, but we can do it real quick. So we'll go ahead and paste this here. I'm going to do the less than and do less than. You'll want to do the same thing with greater than, uh, greater than equal and less than equal. Why don't we go ahead and run this puppy? So now what we can do is what we, this will allow us to do without it giving incorrect data is we should be on my list dot sort. And I'm going to actually put a breakpoint on sort and I'll put a breakpoint on the compare to just to show you that it does utilize that. Let's run it. Building. Hit F11. And boom. We've come into the compare to. Comparing the weight of 1500 to 1500. Of course, that's just going to return zero. And offer to put it the same place in the sort. But if you had more realistic data to sort, you would obviously see perfect results. Well, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully, this was very useful to you. There's plenty of other interfaces, obviously, than equatable and comparable, but these are two of the most useful. Have a great day.